Whenever I see long word problems, my first thing to read is the answer choices. Let me see if there's some simple differences between the answer choices that I can kind of notice right away. That way when I read the actual question and the story, I'm looking for something in particular. I'm not just trying to absorb all the information. I have a task. So the thing I notice right away is we have two different possible combinations for this first little bit here, right? We have 35R and then we have 40R. Right, and so you can see that they're switching it. Does the R go with the 35 or does the R go with the 40? So now I'm gonna read this thing. I'm gonna to try to see, is there one match that's pretty obvious here? So um, on a car trip, well actually, you know what? Let's just go to it, right? So here's the 35, 35 miles per hour. Uh, Rhett drove at an average of speed of 35 miles per hour. Uh, so that's Rhett is 35. Now I'm gonna assume that Rhett and R are the same thing, let's see. R is the number of hours Rhett drove. Yeah, so I didn't even have to read the story. I can just kind of see that they're gonna list the variable that I'm interested in, and then I'm just trying to match the rate with that variable. So that's why we typically have a number in front of a variable in a story, uh, in, in an equation from a story, is that that represents some sort of rate. So here, miles per hour is as clear as it can be that we have a rate. So just like that, I'm not even interested in choices C and D. They have the wrong combination. They are matching the, the, the R, RET, with 40, but it says 40 is Jessica. So no need to match those up. Now, again, thinking about the answer choices more than the story, the only real decision point here is whether or not we need a greater than or a less than sign. So 35R plus 40J, that seems to probably be the amount of, of miles, I guess, that these two people drove. So do we want that to be greater or less than? Let's see. Uh, on a car trip, Brent and Jessica each drove for part of the trip and the total distance they drove was under, so that's gonna be less than 220 miles. Now let's just make sure there's no twist anywhere else. I don't think there's gonna be, but they say Rhett drove at this speed, Jessica drove at that speed. Which of the following inequalities represents the situation? Yeah, so we just want it to be that their total distance, which is the kind of meaty side of that equation, is less than 220, so that is choice B. Now look, this is number two. This is We're in the hard module, so uh, you know it, technically it's overall harder, but even number two in the hard module is an easier question than we're gonna see later in the section or that we would see in, in you know most of the first module. So uh, it's not so bad. Maybe if we read this, we would have gotten this kind of naturally anyway, but I'm always worried about misreading something. You know, Think about it just this way. If we had misread this one word, under and then we thought it was over, then that's the that's it, that's the wrong answer. So by letting the answer choices give us things to care about, we are more likely to pay really close attention to those things in the story and not make the careless mistake of misreading. We, we're gonna have much harder questions in this hard module, so we don't wanna lose points on stuff like this that's still very controllable. So use the choices and work backwards. It's a very good strategy in reading and in math, especially when a math question involves a lot of reading.